So this question here says to find the poles and the residues of this function here, pi times z plus i, z times z squared plus 16. Now notice these two terms are in brackets. Now, first thing we need to look for is to find the poles, i.e. when this function is not analytic. So basically what we're looking for is a zero in our denominator, so a case when z is zero, or we're looking for some zero in our numerator. Well, there's no zero in the numerator because there's no tangent or cosine or sine in there, but we can get a zero in the denominator. So for that, what we're going to need to do is factor out this z squared plus 16. The z, that we'll see there that when z is zero, this thing here all becomes uh, non-analytic. So therefore, if z equals zero, that's our first pole. So I'm going to make a note of that here. So the pole here, we've got z equals zero. Now the next one we're going to need to do is find uh, factoring out z plus 16. Now, if we can do that, then we can find the other two poles, because if you've got a squared term here, chances are it's highly likely there's two more poles in there. So z squared plus 16. So z squared plus 16. Now, to factor that out, what we're going to have is z, so it's going to be a coefficient of 4, so plus 4 and z minus 4, but that's going to give us minus 16. So to do that, we need to multiply it by 4i. So it's going to be z plus 4i, z minus 4i. So plus 4i times minus 4i, so 4i times minus 4i. So if we do that, we'll have minus 4 times 4 is 16, and a minus in front, and then the i squared, so i squared is minus 1, so that will give us positive 16 by the fact that i squared equals minus 1. Okay, now we can list our poles of this function, because now we can see z plus 4i and z minus 4i is in our denominator. So f of z equals pi times z plus i over z times z plus 4i, z minus 4i. OK, so now our other two will be at z equals, so minus 4i for z here and plus 4i for z there. So minus 4i and a minus 4i. So I'm just going to write plus or minus. Now these poles here are only for functions with a power of 1 for our z, so therefore these poles will be simple poles. So they're all simple poles. Okay, so they're the bits that we need now to find our residues. Okay, so I'm going to take these calculations off the board, bring this function up the top, and then we're going to go into calculating our residues. Okay. Now let's find these residues. So what we need to do is, with each of these poles, at each of these points, what we do is we find the limit as z equals zero at those points. So for example here, let's look at the term for z equals zero. So what we want is the residue of our function at zero, that's going to be the limit as z approaches zero of our function. So what we do is now we write our f of z without our z and calculate it for z equals zero. So now we've got pi times z plus i and then divide that by, so this term will now disappear and now we've got z plus 4i, z minus 4i. OK, so now what we want as z equals 0. So we want to calculate this for z equals 0. So now let's just do that. So now pi times 0 plus i. 
divided by 0 plus 4i, 0 minus 4i. Okay, now let's do the arithmetic on that. Pi times 0, 0. Pi times i will just give us pi i. So that's pi times i. And then plus 4i times minus 4i. Well, we've got that already here with our plus 16. So that will give us 16. So therefore we've got our first residue. So the residue at f is zero. That is pi i over 16. And that's how we calculate that one. Okay, now let's have a look at trying to calculate the residue at plus four i. Okay, so now what we do is find the limit as z approaches 4i. So this term here will become zero. So now in our calculations, we'll calculate this for this term, this term, and this term. So let's do that. So this time we get pi z plus i, all divided by z and z plus 4i. Okay, and we calculate that for z equals plus 4i. Okay, let's do the uh, algebra on that. So now we've got pi times 4i plus i. And now we've got 4i times 4i plus 4i. Okay, let's just simplify this off. So now we've got 4 pi i plus pi i divided by, so 4i times 4i, that's going to give us minus 16. And then 4i times another 4i, that's going to give us another minus 16. Okay, so that would just simple off now, simplify off to 5 pi i, and then minus 32 in our denominator. So I just write a 32 and put a minus sign there. So now we've got our residue. I'm going to write these ones here. Residue of f at 4i. That is minus 5 pi i over 32. OK, now let's have a look at the residue at minus 4i. OK, so now let's find the limit as z approaches minus 4i, in which case this one here will disappear. That will be our zero. So now let's write it in terms of all the terms without this one. So that will equal pi times z plus i divided by z times z minus 4i. OK. Now we're going to plug in our minus 4i for each of these z's. So let's do that. So that equals pi times minus 4i plus i. This time we've got minus 4i times minus 4i minus 4i. So a lot of repeated terms there. This time to calculate it, I'm not going to distribute each bit outside of the brackets. This time I'm going to calculate in the brackets for a different way of working it out. So minus 4i plus i, that's simply minus 3i. So minus 3i times pi. So pi times minus 3i. And then here, minus 4i minus 4i is minus 8i. So minus 8i times minus 4i. So minus 4i minus 8i. Okay. So now we've got minus 3 pi i in our numerator. Now our denominator, we've got to be a little bit careful here. Our minus signs are going to cancel out. So that'd be a great place to start. So leave that as a positive. And then we've got 8i and 4i. Well, 4 eighths are 32. And i squared is minus 1. So that gives us another minus sign. So now these two minuses are going to cancel out. And now we're going to be left with positive 3 pi i over 32. So our residue at f comma minus 4i, 
that equals 3 pi i over 32. Okay, so that's our three residues. And they are all simple poles, but they give us three different values for their residue. Okay.